hi welcome back to my channel well in this video we'll try to learn a very important uh, experimental design which is widely used uh, across uh, uh, laboratory experiments or whenever we are doing our experiments and control condition that is known as completely randomized design and it is uh, commonly known as CRT so let us proceed CRT is a fundamental experimental approach where treatments are randomly allocated to experimental units, ensuring an equal and independent chance for each unit to receive any treatment. It is best suited where experimental material is uniform or homogeneous, and it is widely used in case of laboratory experiments and greenhouse settings, where the experimental conditions can be tightly controlled, achieving homogeneity in experimental materials. Therefore, CRD finds its greatest utility in these controlled environments. So, whenever we are uh, conducting our own experiments where we are interested to evaluate different number of treatments or different number of objects of comparisons, in those situations, this kind of design is used. And this is one of the most flexible designs available in case of single factor experiments. And uh, for the sake of information of all the viewers, that this is the only design in which only two basic principles of experimental design were used. One is randomization and another one is replication. Uh, why there is no use of local control? Because this kind of design is used when the experimental material is uniform or homogeneous. So we don't need to do any kind of blocking or we don't need to apply any kind of local control because already the experimental material is homogeneous in nature. Now, uh, what is the basic layout of this experimental design? Suppose if we have five treatments, A, A, B, C, D, and E, each are replicated four times, then we need four, uh, 20 experimental units. Five multiplied by four is nothing, it is 20. Since the number of units is 20, therefore we need a two-digit random number table uh, which will be consulted and a series of 20 random numbers will be taken excluding those which are greater than 20. Uh, suppose the random numbers which have been generated by using this two digit random number table are 4, 18, 2, 14, 3, 7, 13, likewise 9, 12, 16 and 19. Then what we have to do, uh, then uh, we will uh, serially number uh, we can say after this the plots will be serially numbered and treatment A will be allotted to the plots bearing the serial numbers with respect to this random number table. So treatment A, A belongs to 4, 18, 2 and 14 serials. So if we have uh, numbered uh, since we have 20 plots 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 20. So serially we can say this range from 1 to 20. So the first four 1, 2, 3 and 4. They belong to the first treatment that is treatment A. Uh, we have to see where this 4 is. Uh, so 4 is here. Then after then 18 it is here. Then 2 it is here and uh, 14 it is here. So treatment A will be allocated randomly in this fashion. If we example, uh, if we take an example of the last treatment that is E, so it belongs to the category of 9, 12, 16 and 19. So if we talk about 9, this is here, then we have 12, then we have 16, then we have, so random assignment of treatment is done in this way. Because randomization is very important because it gives a valid uh, estimate, or so we can say the validation of the test of significance, uh, this randomization is very important. So this is the basic procedure how we are going to randomize particular treatments in a CRD. For that, if we have these number of plots now it depends upon number, how many number of treatments and replicates you have uh, since uh, this is a flexible design we can use a large number of treatment also in this case but given the time given the source given the constraints we have to be uh, cautious about that so in this case we have five treatments uh, which were replicated four times so five multiplied by four is 20 uh, so we need 20 plots and for that we need a two digit random number table and if we see the random numbers which are generated by this, uh, according to these random numbers, we can assign or allocate our treatments randomly so that there will be no human or subjective bias. 
Now, how we are going to perform the statistical analysis involving the algebraic procedure, which is known as analysis of variance, which is actually the heart of each and every experimental design. Say, for example, uh, let us suppose there are tray treatments which are applied to obviously into our plots, or we can say every treatment has to be replicated to average out the, or we see the estimate of an error then they can be represented by symbol in the form of symbols like this for example if we have k number of treatments then these represent the number of replicates on the number of times in each and every treatment is replicated uh, these uh, capital ones they represent the treatment totals and obviously we need to get their uh, treatment means also now after that uh, we need to get the grand total which is the sum of all observations we can do it on the both ways cov minus or rho y so based on this we need a, a statistical model which will uh, execute the analysis and which will see whether there exists a significant difference among these treatment means or not based on a certain kind of hypothesis depending upon the question you have depending upon the objective depending upon the experiment you are conducting now that is nothing the statistical model which is involved in crd is yij is equal to mu plus alpha i plus eij where yij is nothing it is the uh, jth replication of i treatment uh, and mu is general mean alpha is the effect of uh, I treatment EIJ is nothing it is the error effect and it's always there because what this NOY in case of CRD will do this will decompose overall variation of this variable response variable study variable into two component one due to the treatments and another due to the error and F, F test will authenticate uh, whether we are in a position to reject the hypothesis which we use to set and in this case uh, we uh, assume a hypothesis there exists or we can say there is no significant difference between the treatment effects like t1 t2 t3 up to tk depends upon how many treatments you have uh, so what are the different steps which are involved in uh, creating or doing this algebraic procedure when we need to test a certain kind of hypothesis in case of crd we need to first find out the correction factor for any for that we need a grand total and square that and divide it with the number of observations uh, which is a multiple of treatments and number of replication then we need to get the first sum of square that is known as total sum of square this is nothing it is squaring each and every observation at the same time we need to add it and we will get some value and we have to deduct that value with the correction factor then we need to get the treatment sum of square for that we need to get the treatment totals first uh, then we need to do the same thing like in the previous step square every treatment total and divide it by the number of replicates you are using now this is the case which pertains to equal number of replication because in crd we can use an unequal number of replication also then divide this whole value minus correction factor then error sum of square is very simple to get it is nothing it is the subtraction between total and minus the treatment sum of square once we have got the uh, got the sum of square then we need to put the sum of square to the ANOVA table uh, in ANOVA table we have different columns and rows the first column is source of variation this is the total variation this total variation is decomposed into treatment and error and every treat every source of variation uh, has uh, is associated with its degrees of freedom and in this case if we have five treatment that means five minus one is 4 then n is nothing is the multiple of number of treatments and number of replicate k is the number of treatment so treatment of sub sum of square error sum of square is already done then we need to get the mean squares of each and every source of variation so we need to get the treatment mean square how we are going to get it we will divide this treatment sum of square with its respective degree of freedom same in case of this error, we will divide this error sum of square with its respective degrees of freedom to get the error mean square, or we can say the mean square treatment due to the treatments or mean square due to the error. Then we need to calculate the F value since it is the ratio of two variances. So we'll put uh, treatment mean square in the numerator and in denominator will keep mean square due to error. Uh, once we have got the F, we need to uh, tally. We need to uh, we need to tally this value with its tabulated value and the thumb rule is if the calculated value is greater than this uh, tabulated value then uh, we have every reason or we have got an evidence to reject the hypothesis uh, we'll reject the null hypothesis which we have set before conducting an experiment 
Now, if we take an example, uh, by means of example, how we can perform this uh, analysis of CRD. Uh, for example, to assess the yielding abilities of five tomato varieties, we have time of five tomato varieties. An experiment was conducted in greenhouse. That means CRD is good to go. Uh, using a CRD uh, completely randomized design with four plots, that means we have four replicates. Every treatment is replicated four times, assigned to each variety. After analyzing the data, uh, then here, uh, we have to see what are the conclusions and we have to state our conclusions so we have five varieties uh, they have been uh, allocated to these four uh, plots and we have the observations or we can say the yield of each and every uh, variety so the null hypothesis here is that there is no significant difference between the effect of these varieties in terms of yield what we need to do the first thing is do the basic arithmetic operations uh, first we need to get the total of treatment then mean uh, so we have got the treatment totals then if we sum all these then we will get the grand total so we'll start with uh, calculating the correction factor that is the square of the grand total divided by the number of observation that is uh, 5 multiplied by 4 5 treatments and 5 varieties and 4 plots that is 20 so in this case we have got the value of 36 double a 32.8 this is our correction factor then total sum of square is very easy to calculate it is uh, squaring each and every observation that means this square plus this square plus this square plus this square plus this square up to the last observation then once we get some value we need to deduct this whole value with uh, correction factor uh, then uh, we have got a total sum of square and variety sum of square in this case is very simple uh, to get the square of the treatment total this square plus this square plus this square plus this square and finally this square and same is written here then whole divided by the number of replicates minus the correction factor uh, once we have got the total sum of square variety sum of square error sum of square is very easy to calculate that is uh, nothing total sum of square minus or subtracting the value of variety sum of square so we have got the values of correction this error sum of square then in the previous step or in the previous slide what we have done the same methodology we have to execute here we will put all these um, sum of squares in their respective rows uh, with respect to the source of variation the first one is uh, variety the second one is error here it is k minus 1 that is 5 minus 1 is 4 it is n minus k 20 minus 4 is uh, 50 and n minus 1 is 20 minus 1 is 19 so we have got the sum of square due to variety sum of square due to error so here what we have to do we'll divide this value with uh, 4 9 3 2 double 1 point 2 divided by 4 that is equal to 2 double 3 0 2 point 8 then uh, similar uh, way we will divide this value with 15 we'll get this 2 0 6 8 point 3. then we need to get the f uh, here what we have to do we'll divide this value with this one and we will get the f uh, calculated here now uh, we need to find out uh, whether we will accept this hypothesis or reject this hypothesis for that we need to test the calculated value of this f test with its stabilized value and in this case at 4 uh, degrees of freedom and 15 error degrees of freedom the tabulated value of f is 3.6 and the thumb rule is if the calculated value of a test of significance is greater than uh, its critical or tabulated value then we have got an evidence to reject the null hypothesis so we are rejecting the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference between uh, these treatments in terms of yielding capacity so we have every reason to believe there exists a significant difference among these uh, five varieties in terms of uh, yielding ability so the null hypothesis in this case is rejected uh, we need to proceed further and we need to do the post hoc analysis because null hypothesis in this case this f will tell us there exists a significant difference among these uh, treatment effects so we can say at least two treatments are significantly uh, different from each other but we need to figure out which of the pair of the treatments uh, or which of the pair of varieties in this case in context the yielding abilities are significantly different from each other for need for that we need to perform the post hoc analysis or we need to do a multiple comparison test and we will start with the first one that is to need to calculate the critical difference so post hoc analysis as far as this post hoc analysis is concerned once our f is significant 
second like in this case our calculated is greater than tabulated so we have every reason to believe there exists a significant difference among these varieties with respect to the variable of interest and that is yielding capacity again now since we have five varieties uh, it might happen only two varieties might be significant with each other and rest of uh, the varieties let's say for example three varieties will not be significant so we need to figure it out which would appear on the treatment server. for that we need to perform multiple comparison tests so here uh, since the calculated value is greater than tabulated value in this case we have used a five percent level of significance so null hypothesis is rejected hence we conclude there exists a significant difference between variety mean so what this critical difference will do actually it executes like in this way it is a multiple of standard error of difference of mean and a t with a particular level of significance for an error degree of freedom in this case we have 50. so since the standard error of difference of nothing it is under root of twice of mean square error which is uh, this value 2086 uh, divided by the number of replicates and in this case it is 2 multiply of this mean square error that is 2086.13 whole divided by 4 then we will multiply it with this uh, t value uh, the t value at a uh, five percent level of significance with 15 degrees of error degrees of freedom is 2.13 uh, so the overall critical difference is 68.7 so uh, what we have to do we need to first arrange uh, the varieties in descending order uh, this is our highest uh, yield um, this is uh, say for example a variety with the lowest lean in descending order for magnitude and the thumb rule is if the difference between two variety means is less than cd value it will be declared as non-significant and if the difference between two means or we can say the variety means in this case is greater than this critical difference or it is usually known as least significant difference then the treatment means are said to be significantly different from each other since uh, we have got a standard value of 68.79 in this case the varieties which do not differ significantly have been underlined by bar and it is clearly visible and the difference between variety first and variety five is uh, uh, very low in comparison to this so they are not significantly different uh, in terms of year and same is the case with variety 5 and uh, 2 same is the case with uh, v2 and uh, v4 but if we will consider this variety first with respect to variety 3 so these two varieties are significantly different from each other as the difference between these two varieties v1 and v3 uh, say is more uh, is very high uh, in comparison to the this critical difference or least significant difference so it is concluded here that whenever we are performing any kind of design now in this context we are talking about the completely randomized design which is usually used whenever we are conducting our experiments in uh, homogeneous conditions uh, for example we are conducting our experiment if it, I will take an example of forestry we are conducting our experiment in laboratory or we are conducting our experiment in roof trainers or pots or we are conducting our experiment in um, greenhouses or mixed chambers then we need to uh, uh, do the evaluation of these treatments or whatever the treatments uh, which are involved in experiment by means of completely randomized design and uh, one important thing or information about this design is that it is the only design in which only two basic principles of experimental uh, designs uh, are used uh, one is randomization and another one is replication we don't need local control like I've said uh, when i started my lecture because uh, the experimental material is homogeneous so we don't need any kind of uh, uh, blocking or local control so uh, you are dealing and laboratory experiment so you need to evaluate the treatment set the hypothesis apply the analysis of variance uh, using crd uh, then you can give or your interpretation and uh, conclusion in our next video we will uh, uh, we'll learn how we go how we are going to execute the analysis if we are evaluating the different treatments in uh, field conditions for that we need to perform in another kind of a design so we'll see you in the next video till then thank you very much hope you will like this video